I guess we should say that over the last one year, two years, five years, emerging markets have lagged pretty badly. So there's plenty of catch up in theory Absolutely. to be done. What makes you think that uh, it might be ripe for it at this point? Yeah, I think we're in this period right now, especially in a higher inflation environment where valuation really is going to matter. And your emerging markets are a lot better value than the U.S. right now. And especially when you look at China, it's always this question of when are they going to open? And we've had a lot of false starts there. But I think that really is a question of it, when, not a question of if they're going to reopen. And I think you want to take advantage of the pricing now, because once the reopening happens, there's a lot of money that's still going to go in there. And that can happen very quickly. So you want to take advantage times like now that it's still priced very well. And especially right now when you're seeing um, emerging market um, currencies compared to the dollar, it's still at record lows. And so you want to make sure you're taking advantage of that because that can turn very quickly here. Right. I was going to say it's, it's really to a large degree a China bet just because China is yeah. waiting in the, in the emerging markets. And also, I mean, is that your general sense that the dollar having rolled over a little bit is now – on a downswing or you feel like it, it can only go down from here or, or no? I think that the idea is it will continue to weaken. I mean, obviously, you know, we have to see how things continue. But if we do start to see inflation starting to come down, there's a lot of data that's supporting that. And I think that's really what's holding up the markets right now. That is going to likely lead to a lower dollar, which is going to benefit your foreign markets, especially your emerging markets. In terms of the U.S. markets, uh, obviously on a, on a pretty good upswing mm -hmm. over the last five or six weeks, um, it's definitely gotten to this period where it feels like the economy is in a bit of a thaw. Mm -hmm. And the Fed maybe is going to be less hostile. Um, is that enough to, to carry things higher, do you think, from here? I do. I mean, I think the big thing that's been overweighing the markets is inflation. I think we're fin finally seeing some data that that's coming down. That's really what the markets are holding on to right now. But I think if inflation's coming down, we have the midterms behind us. And the economy is still on pretty good footing. The consumer is still really strong. And I think that it does put you in a position here that we can continue to see a rally through the end of the year. I, you know, one of the reasons that I think people are getting comfortable about the peak inflation story and the fact that it should keep coming down, of course, is what's going on with oil. Mm -hmm. um, it feeds directly into, you know, lower bond yields, lower inflation expectations and the pricing of inflation. And yet your energy stocks have, you know, they've pulled back a little bit, but they're still near their highs. Um, how does that equation work out for you in terms of the risk reward for energy stocks? Yeah, and energy stocks, I think what you need to keep in mind is energy prices can be a lot lower for them to still be profitable because they came in so much more efficient, especially back in 2020 when oil prices went negative for that short period of time. They were forced to become more efficient. So even if oil prices come down, your energy companies are still a really good opportunity here. Um, but not only are oil prices coming down, but housing is a big portion of CPI, and you're starting to see that come down as well. That is takes a little bit longer to make it th make its way through CPI. So I think over the next six to 12 months, you're going to see that continue. I think those are really the things that the, the markets are focusing on right now. If those things come together, because it's been this race, perceived race between can inflation come down quickly mm -hmm. enough that the Fed doesn't have to really choke off economic growth more than we were anticipating. Um, do you think that that somehow can can land in a, in a f favorable place in terms of avoiding recession? Next yeah, the, the soft landing we've all yeah. been talking about. I mean, it's still a possibility. It's obviously um, we're going to have to see how things continue here. And we have seen the Fed overshoot in the past. We need to make sure they're not going to continue to do that. I don't think they're going to like stop raising interest rates here. I mean, they're definitely expected to raise interest rates in in December, um, maybe early in the year. But I think at some point, if we see them inflation come down enough and the economy continue to be on strong footing, I think it's still a possibility. OK, so a possibility, but you wouldn't necessarily have to bake a great growth year into your forecast for next year, I guess, for earnings to be OK, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out as to whether we can, in retrospect, are going to view 2022 as the year when we took all the pain that we had to take in the economy and on rates. Well, I think it quite quite possibly could yeah. be, right? And um, it is, I think it's largely dependent on inflation, that we have to see it come down because at a certain point it's going to become unsustainable. And if inflation doesn't come down, the consumer is, they're starting to dip into their savings. And the benefit is they have so much cash on hand still from the pandemic that it's keeping them in a good position. But at a certain point in time, they're going to draw that down. So that's why we have to see that come down. That's what this is really hinging on yeah. right now.